Well hello Internet and welcome to part 11 of my Android development for beginners tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build an interface, a really nice interface for our weather app that we've been working on. I'm going to show you how to draw all of the different icons we're going to need and I'm also going to spend some time talking about why I decided to lay out the app the way I did. Probably the easiest thing to do is to look at the finished app so that's what we're going to do right now. All right, and this is the final app. And yes, this was completed completely in App Inventor. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I drew everything and how I decided to lay out everything. Okay, so now you know what the finished app is gonna look like. And pretty much, I'm actually gonna add a couple other things to it. And this is the rough sketch that I used to create what you just saw. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna need to go in and draw all of these different things. So the first thing I have here is a rain cloud. And let me zoom out here for a second. I have a rain cloud, I have sun, I have snow. That's what this is supposed to be, partly cloudy. This is gonna represent a clear night. This is going to represent a foggy night or a foggy day. And this is going to be partly cloudy at night. I figured that was enough things. I'm not gonna get into tornadoes and things like that. It's gonna be a very, very functional weather app. So it should be quite neat. So let's just go in here and start drawing some stuff. And I'm inside of Inkscape, of course. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this rather than using the Bezier tool, which is what you would think maybe that's what I would use. I'm going to instead use ellipse because I think I'm gonna get much better results if I actually draw with circles because that's in essence what this is. So I'm holding down the shift key. And yes, this is pretty much the most generic cloud that is used all the time everywhere. So I just wanted to use it just kind of for fun. And then I'm gonna draw myself another ellipse and hold down the shift key and just put it down there and make it roughly what I was looking for. And there we go. And then the final circle right here. And there we go. Now I wanna make sure that these all line up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a grid and drag it down inside of there or a little guide, I guess I should call it. And if I wanna zoom in here, I'll then be able to, I'm gonna hit the select tool. So grab this guy right here and I'm going to move it up until it comes in touch with that little guide. Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna check that this also lines up with the guide, which I think that it does. Okay, great. Now what I'm gonna do to draw a straight line down there is I'm gonna switch over to my rectangle tool and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle inside of this and come down and hopefully touch that guide. There we go. And let's see how good of a job I did or I didn't do. And it looks like I did an okay job. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And if we zoom in here, you can see there's a slight indentation there and there's no indentation over there. Okay, so I have my little cloud. Now what I'm gonna do is combine everything. So I'm gonna select this ellipse, hold down shift, select that. Then I'm gonna go to path and union. And now they are just one shape. Hold down shift, get this one. Zoom in, path and union. Hold down shift, zoom in here, path and union. And then finally get the rectangle, path and union. And whenever I do that, I have my cloud all set up and it looks pretty doggone nice. Now what I wanna do here with this drawing, whether you can see that or not, is I wanted the drawing to be an outline. So this is gonna be black. Actually, it's gonna end up being blue later on, but for now it's gonna be black. And then inside of here is gonna be transparent. So what I decide I wanna do here is go down and shut off the fill just by clicking on X. There we go. And I have a black stroke. And then what I'm gonna do is to open up the strokes and all that, you click on this little guy down here. And then this is gonna open up. And the stroke style, let's say I take this up to 20, I don't know. And that's looking pretty dark on close to what I was looking for. Only thing is this is rounded off instead of coming to a point. So I'm gonna go into this. I'm gonna drag this up here, drop it in. And for this, I'm gonna give it a point for the join right there. And now it's a point it, and it looks perfect. All right, that's exactly what I was looking for. So I'm gonna drag this down here. And one thing that I didn't talk about is how everything's organized. I basically did this little drawing here on just regular old piece of paper. If we zoom out of this. Okay, so I did this little drawing right here, and I used a rough sort of like grid system. That's how I normally organize everything. And then I opened up the layers panel, which of course you can go up here to layer, 
right like that and then come down here and click on layers and whenever you do the layers little panel is going to show up over here and there you can see and I imported my drawing the little pen sketch that I have right here into a layer called drawing and then I locked it and then I'm going to be drawing on top of it on a new layer which of course you can add layers just by hitting the plus sign and I'm going to draw on top of the little drawing inside of there so that's what's going on all right so now that I've cleared up all the different things that I think you need to know I'm going to continue drawing my little cloud inside of here and I personally think it's very 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 important to be able to draw so if you're gonna do apps now what I'm gonna do zoom in here is this is supposed to be a representation of rain so I'm just gonna roughly get the size right there and then I am going to go up here to path and go object to path and that's just gonna change it from being a rectangle into being a path and all that means is there are nodes if I switch into the node tool see there's nodes here so that's what's going on and I just find it's easier to work with okay so go back into the selection tool by clicking S that's the selection tool if you want to just click on that and that's the node tool right there if you just want to click on that now I'm going to rotate this so select it again and I'm just gonna rotate it without holding down any keys and that's just going to give me a rough estimate of roughly what I want that to look like. Now, I'm going to hold down on this and I'm going to click on Shift and either Alt or Option, depending upon what operating system you have. And I'm going to hit the space bar and then I'm going to drag it over and I'm going to hit the space bar again and again. And it doesn't matter that this doesn't line up because it's a pencil sketch. So it's, you know, pretty much not going to line up again and another space bar. I'm going to drag this out of there. Okay, so I have all those drawn in there. Now if I want to make sure they're all an equal distance apart, I'm just going to select all of them. Then I'm going to get to the align and distribute, which can be found inside of this right here. So we'll just go object, align and distribute. That opens up that little panel. Then inside of this, if I want to make sure that they're all the same height, meaning that they all line up on the upper edge, I'm going to click on this. And if I want to make sure they are an equal distance apart, I'm going to click on this. And there we go, I didn't have to worry about moving things around or guides or anything else. Everything's going to work perfectly. And then move those down like that. And let's just go and move the cloud out of here all together so we can work with it without paying attention to the little sketch underneath. Now I'm kind of digging the pointedness on this actually now. This is a kind of an accident that that happened. But just to stick with what I originally did, I'm going to select all of them and go into the join up here and hit the curved. And now you can see that they are all curved. Okay, now it comes to making this short and this one long and so forth and so on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the node tool up here and I'm just going to select this. And if we zoom in, and I'm just going to make it go down a certain number of spaces. Da 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 da. Da, 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 until it looks about right. I do a lot of things by eye. All right, so that's a little bit better. And then what I'm gonna do, something a little wacky. There's no problem. If you don't like how something's turning out, just delete it. And I'm just gonna select this item, shift, either alt or option, space, space, space. There we go. And guess what, they don't line up, no problem. Just select them all. Go over here to align and distribute. And then I'm just gonna click on this to make them all line up. And there we go. There's our rain cloud, pretty much exactly what we were looking for. I'm going to zoom out of this guy. I'm then also going to grab my little cloud that I have right here, make a copy of that guy, and then drag this guy down here. And now I'm going to make it snow. So zoom in on it. And what I did here was I did like a random snow and decided I didn't like that. And so then I made it less random. So it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to come over to the ellipse tool here. And let's zoom in even further so I'm sure you can see everything. All right, better. Now what I'm gonna do, make these little circles right here, get the ellipse tool with an E, hold down shift key, draw that in there like that, and that looks good. I'm actually going to give this a fill, so fill right like that, and then I'm gonna hold down the shift key to get rid of the stroke, shift key, stroke is gone. And then I'm also gonna come up here to object, or actually path, and then go object to path like that. Come in here and enlarge this, perfect. Use my little trick with the spaces, and there we go. I'm going to select both of these at the same time. And I'm going to follow this rough sort of idea here and then correct things if I don't like the way they turn out. Zoom out. And I got my little cloud. Select that. Actually, let's just select it all and then drag it out here and see how this works out. There we go. Looking pretty good. And I'm kind of liking that. It's not perfect. I could come in here and just by eye change things a little bit. And there we go. There is my snow icon. So click on. Z and I'm going to zoom out again. For this guy right here which is going to represent a clear night what I'm going to do again is use the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw this in here perfect and then I'm going to go and draw another ellipse 
and let's go and make this white and I think that looks like a pretty good representation of a moon. I'm going to select both of them, come up here to path and I'm going to say difference which is going to get rid of the top and there we go have myself a moon. If I really wanted to go in here and change it so it's the same angle, I can just go and do that, or a rough representation of the same thing. Like I said, the thing underneath is a sketch, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be precise. I want to have a little bit of fun with this. All right, so there's my moon. Going to zoom out. Of course, if things change, I can always go in here and change right along with them. Here is the fog, or what I thought sounded like a good way of representing fog. Now I'm going to go inside of this and draw this circle. I think that maybe it should be a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go into fill and stroke and then go inside of here and increase this. Let's say that I increase it to 23 and I think that looks a little bit better. And then I'm going to go in here and draw these little lines inside of here. Just going to do that with rectangle and then I'm going to make sure the join is curved because that's what I have here. Also going to come down here and go black and then hold down the shift key and get rid of the stroke. As you can see right there, the stroke went away. Side of this, draw that in there. Oop, I'm actually going to need the stroke, so hold down shift key, get the stroke back. The reason why is I want this to be curved. So click on that, now it's curved. And if I want it to be curved more, I can just click on the node tool up here and then zoom in and grab this little circle and curve it more. See, it's curved more now. I'm going to change this back to a stroke and then for the fill, I'm going to make it nothing. Okay, and I'm just going to grab this here, make a rough guess about how that should line up and hold this down. Shift, either Alt or Option, space, drag this down here, space, drag this down here. I can select all three of them then, go over into Align Distribute. If I want them to be an equal distance apart, I can click on this guy right here for Distribute. There they are, they're an equal distance apart. Now I'm just going to come in here and change their size a little bit. So grab this and bring that in a little bit. Take a look at that. I can also come in here, drag that in there a little bit. Maybe make this one a little bit shorter. Maybe make this a little bit longer. And there we are. Sort of like this weird approximation of fog. Looks interesting. And that was really the goal for creating all these. Okay, so I have my moon done. I got my fog done. I got my rain done. I got all those things done. Everything's looking pretty nice. Then we have to go and get the little cloud with the moon. No problem. Let's just go and get ourselves a cloud right here. Make a copy of that. Bring it over here. Go get this guy. Make a copy of that. Again, holding down shift, either alt or option and space. Bring that over here. And I'm going to zoom in again. And I want this to make it look like the moon is behind the cloud. I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Bring it right there. And I'm going to want to make sure that the cloud is on top. So I'm going to click on object, raise to top, right like that. And then I'm going to select both of them. And then I'm going to go path and difference. And there I got my moon now. I'm going to zoom out of here. And I can grab this cloud up here, make a copy of it, and slip it right inside of there. So I got my little effect that I was looking for. And there you go. It's a little moon coming out from behind that cloud. And what else? Is there anything else you need to do here? Oh yes, I have to do the sun. No big deal. I'm just going to go and steal this guy right here, drag it up here, and I have the gist for what it wants. So I'm just going to come in there like that. I'm going to go and draw myself a rectangle on top here. That's too much. I'm going to go over into fill and stroke. 23 fill, that's way too much. Let's say I make this uh, 5, just about perfect. I'm going to increase that a little bit. That looks about right. And I'm going to make a copy of it. Drag it right here. Click on it once to rotate it. That looks about right. I'm going to make another copy. Well, let's move this out a little bit. Hold that down. Make a copy. There we go. Drag another one right there. Click on it. Rotate it. Click. Perfect. Drag that right there. Rotate it again. And there we go. Got my sun done. And then the only other thing left is the sun and the cloud. And actually, you know what? I'm just going to change this a little bit. Let's add a little bit more of a stroke to it. Change it to 40. And that looks better to me. And then I just have to put the sun behind a cloud. I'm just going to copy this. Go grab myself a cloud. Copy that. Back over to my sun. Make another copy. And this time I had my sun set up so that it was on this side. First thing I'm going to do is shrink it. And that looks about right. Let's go and change the stroke for this. Change it to 20. That looks pretty good. Select everything. Click it once. Rotate. Move this out a little bit. Looking pretty good. Might as well just go in here and delete these. Get my cloud. And I'm going to go object. And I'm going to say raise the top. And I'm going to go path. And I'm going to go difference. And there you can see my sun. Go grab myself another cloud. And there we go. I have my partly cloudy. All right, so that's a rough idea of how I drew all of these different icons. Now what I'm going to do is go and start pulling the interface together. 
As you can see, it's right there. And I actually went and drew some of these ahead of time, just to save a little bit of time. Here's a whole bunch of these little guys. Just bring them over here. And then the main idea here is to go in and lay all these pieces out. And yes, in vector art, here's all of them, by the way. See, I drew them. And you can draw all of them using exactly the same techniques I just showed you. Now what I do is in vector art, I go and get all of my icons drawn in, and then I place them into position. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do after you do that is you're going to want to measure everything. And you're also going to want to bring guides down inside of here. And you're also going to want to go down into preferences and document preferences or document properties. And then go in here to guides and make sure that snap guides while dragging is checked. And then you're just going to want to get all of your little pieces, move them into place after you've drawn all of them. See, it's snapping to the guide. And there we go. And of course, I'm going to let you all have all this vector art whenever it's all done so that everybody will be able to make the application. And of course, it's free. And there we go. And then you're going to want to go in with your text tool and type those out. Get rid of the stroke, of course. And if I'm going to be using sans serif, I'm going to want to use a sans serif font here. And I want everything to line up. And just to make this quick, I'm just going to put the same thing everywhere. And then it's just a matter of just estimating what you want this to look like or to be more specific, I'm going to be converting this pencil drawing into vector art. There we go. Rough estimate of that. I can draw in this magnifying lens later on. Type in 37. And this is also by doing this, it's going to give you a rough estimate of exactly how big your different fonts should be. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to continually go through and type out exactly what I did with pencil inside of Inkscape. And then there is not a ruler tool inside of Inkscape like there is inside of Illustrator, but that doesn't really matter because if you come down here, way, way at the bottom, let me open this up a little bit, way down here at the bottom of the screen, and there's no real way for me to show you this, but basically if you use the gradient tool, which looks like this right here, this is the gradient tool, and if I select that, and then down here what's going to happen is whenever I hold down the shift key and start dragging with the gradient tool, so for example, if I wanted to see how big Pittsburgh was going to be and how big of a box I'm going to have to create for it inside of Inkscape, I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to click at the beginning of Pittsburgh and I'm going to drag, 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 drag. And down the bottom right hand corner under X, next to X, it's going to say 128 pixels. And say there's just no way for me to do it. You're just going to have to play with that on your own. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that over and over and over again. I'm going to hold down the shift key with my gradient tool and I'm going to measure out everything. But we also have to think a little bit like chance of rain. Well, there's going to be longer weather descriptions than that. So what I'm thinking is it would probably make more sense to have this be the whole way over here to this icon. Well, of course, I would want to use guides, drag guides out like that, and then measure based off of those guides. So let's drag those two guides out. Still got my gradient tool selected. And if I want to measure the distance from here, because this is going to be a grid, it's just going to be a whole bunch of boxes with text and pictures inside of them. I can then click here, hold down the shift key, and measure out exactly how far those different distances are apart. And then after I do that long enough, what I can end up doing is I'll end up having exactly what the app is supposed to look like. And then I'll put little notes as you can see right here is 17. So I'm thinking that everywhere in this app there's going to be a margin of 17 right here. Then for this little box, text box, it's going to allow them to enter their city name. I'm going to say that's 256 pixels long. And then the search, little button here, is going to be 37. And then there's going to be a 10 pixel margin at the end. And of course I can use math to make this work with any screen size but I'm just using the default App Inventor screen size right here. And then I can do that over and over and over again. I'm just going to measure again with the gradient tool. And then inside of it, I'm gonna measure the distance between this to this. And I'm gonna know that I need to put that margin space inside of there. 14 is gonna say that's how tall Pittsburgh should be. And then of course I could get to the little gradient tool and measure out how far over it should go. Actually Pittsburgh, I'm going to do width of parent so that I'll be able to accommodate large city names. And I'm just going to do that over and over and over again and write down all of these different distances. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to take this vector art that you see right here and turn it into the working interface that you saw at the beginning of the tutorial. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.